Wow. So this is the Korg DSS-1 sampling synthesizer from 1988. And it is, as Dubstation in the chat was saying, a brontosaurus of a synth. This is the biggest synth that I have in terms of size, and it has a very small brain. <laughs> uh, for the time, though, this was probably the most fully featured sampler on the market and one of the most fully featured synthesizers, period. And I believe might be Korg's last analog synth until they sort of had the reinvention of analog and the, the sort of renaissance that they started with the Electribes and the Monotrons and stuff like that in the 2000s. And it was definitely the last sampler that Korg did for at least 10 years until they came out with, like a, I believe, the Triton series. So it sort of represents Korg uh, batting for the fences the best they could and... You know, it's one of those synths that much like a DX7, we've got a lot of parameters here that are luckily uh, on the synth itself. And we've got two data entry sliders, which is great. And we can actually load a shitload of sounds into this with floppy disks. So I don't understand why, but you know, like on a Mirage, same size floppy disk, you could get four sounds on that. And that was like pretty cool. Um, on this one, Instead of being 8-bit, this puppy is 12-bit, and the difference is massive. So when we did the stream with the Insonic Mirage, which, by the way, we do a live stream on this channel every Wednesday at 9, checking out vintage gear and sometimes new synth sounds and stuff. So definitely subscribe if you want to check that out. But the thing is, is when we checked out the Mirage, even though it is this like legendary sampler, I think we were all a little bit like lukewarm on the sound because certain sounds it did pretty well. About 50% of the time though, it just sounded so uh, hot and distorted and not, and I, I like, I love industrial music, but not in that way, more in like, a, it just doesn't sound that great sort of a way. The fidelity on the DSS-1 is incredible, but you still do get a little bit of that vintage, dirty, grainy, grittiness that we all love from these vintage samplers. So it's sort of, for me, the best of both worlds. And it has effectively a DW8000 built into it. It's got all the waveforms from the DW8000 as well as the analog filter of the DW8000, which is argued to be the best filter Korg ever put in a synth. And then it's also got the digital chorus slash delay from the DW8000. And by the way, next week, we'll be checking out a stream on that synth. So that's another good reason to like and subscribe to the channel. But yeah, it's just an incredibly special instrument. And so I have in here right now this uh, strings floppy disk and the way this works, if I put it in the system mode here, it'll say select one through nine. We can just hit one and enter. I have to give that a little, little heavier push. And then yes. And now we'll begin loading the synth, which is a perfect time for me to check the chat, see how everybody's doing. Hey, Shane, welcome to the stream. How's it going? Happy New Year's. Did I miss cheers or am I crazy? I totally forgot to cheers, you guys. So for all of the scum family that comes out every Wednesday at 9 p.m., I appreciate you guys and love you very much. I'm going to drink this Underberg. You guys can drink whatever you have at home, be it alcoholic or not. But I wanted to give a big cheers to all of you guys. And if I could get some scum cheers in the chat, that would be amazing. Amazing. I love everyone out there. And uh, yeah, let's check this out. Just for the record, it is still loading the sounds right now. We've got plenty of time. So let's go ahead and get this cheers going. Mmm. Mmm. All right. That, that is what I'm talking about. That was a hot, hot Underberg. So yeah. Let's see. Oh, what happened to the vulture head? You got to stay signed up. Okay, so you can see that it says completed. System A completed. So we unselect system here. And it's loaded the first sound off of this. And there's a bunch of sounds in each system. And there's four systems to each disc. So we've got a lot to cover. Whereas with the Insonic, we were pulling... Four sounds off a disc? I don't understand it. I guess they must be a different kind of floppy disc or something because there's so much higher quality sounds per disc than on the Mirage. So if someone has the answer to that, let me know. 
Um, that's an awesome lineup, Tony. Edge Tone, welcome to the stream. Sorry about the technical issues last time. Where's your membership link? It should be right below the video. There should be something that says join down there. So let's check this out. So you guys can hear immediately that the fidelity is there. I mean, this is pretty good for scoring. So then we just hit zero two to pull up the next sound. This is Arco Mix. You can hear there's a good amount of velocity. So if I hit a note kind of light, get a very nice touch or I could really stab it. So a lot of expressivity. Hey, plugin gurus here. Hey, how's it going? I worked at a music store that sold the Korg DSS-1. Cool to see it getting some love. One of the coolest things with the sampler is the the uh, digital delay line has pitch modulation. Yeah, so essentially what you can do with this sampler slash synthesizer, which has an additive engine built into it too, um, that I have not spent enough time with this guy to understand, is to actually um, use the digital delay, but use it more like a chorus. So if you use really short times and then modulate that, it's essentially a chorus, uh, which is super cool. Uh, and it's also stereo. So that's a, a beautiful thing. Really neat. And by the way, John Skippy Lemkul, I just want to say it's awesome to have you here. You inspired me to start YouTubing. So it's really cool to have you. Um, I used to watch all your videos back on like Omnisphere. I bought Omnisphere because I watched your stuff and um, you're just an inspiration. And for those of you guys who don't know, uh, John Skippy Lemkul, I think I'm saying your name correctly, by the way, but uh, Plugin Guru over here on YouTube is one of the lead designers on the Korg Wave Station, my favorite synthesizer of all time. So super cool to have you here, man. Just want to say appreciate that. Neon Void, welcome to the stream. Um, yes, so samplers definitely were prohibitively expensive. <laughs> And there is just something so beautiful about the texture of that sound, right? It's an absolutely sort of unique, you know, like I, I have a fascination with going back in time to and trying to find the like hidden gems. And these guys, the price on them is all over the place. Sometimes you see them and you can't find one in the world for less than $2,000. And sometimes you can get them sub a thousand by a bit. So that's a good thing. Yes, our phones are 100 times better samplers than anything before the 2000s. Yeah, so I am saying it correctly. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, CMI Fairlight was 100,000K plus. Two grand-ish for the DSS-1 when it came out. Bought it at West LA Music. Um, when I first heard 4-bit samplers, yeah. Yeah. Used to make beats on a... Hey, Robin, welcome to the stream, my friend. So anyways, let's keep moving here. It, there's a lot of sounds to cover, so I want to make sure that I get to a wide breadth of different things that this synth can do. So why don't we check... You can get pretty tender sounds out of this. This one's amazing. This is using the digital delay line. get these just incredible textures. 
Wow. Just a lot of fun. So it's really cool. It does have a strong 80s vibe. Yeah, I, you can sometimes get these for, like you said, like 650, not that bad. And again, comparing it to the Mirage, which for me would be the fairest comparison, because uh, what would it be? The next year, the Proteus would come out, and that was like really a game changer for samplers, but... I think this really kind of represents that sort of sound of the 80s samplers. I mean, it is crazy. Like Neon Void was saying, it's the the price difference in these guys went from being the cost of a recording studio to when the Mirage came out. It was like, I want to say sub 5,000, you know, something like that. friend the romex king how's it going brother good to see you good to see you so that's pretty crazy you're using the dss1 to sample sounds from your euro rack that's uh that's definitely interesting. Do you use uh dub the additive engine? That's what I'm interested in. So can you see it? Yeah, so right here is a Kawai K3, really exciting synthesizer also from the 80s that can also do additive synthesis. And I don't know how to do it on either of them. I need to like spend some time with the manual. Like I said, I'm really driving hard at the Roland D50 right now. One of the things I love about this numerical layout which sounds so stupid but because the zero is set to the side here it reminds you that the first nine sounds you have to go zero one zero two instead of like one 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 two like you would on most other synths so i appreciate that so you, i believe here you can hear you can hear how it's been multi-sampled differently. So the way the DSS-1 tends to work is each octave is its own sample. So down here, there is a bell tone in it. But it's not as pronounced as up here. Right? That's its own sort of brighter type of sound, so... Yeah, really... E piano and strings. One thing is, I've always been looking for that perfect um, electric piano sound that you can get from a synthesizer or a sampler or something. Obviously, one day, maybe I'll end up with a Fender Rhodes, but uh, we'll see about that. Um, but in the meantime, I, I actually am fascinated ever since I heard Dire Dire Docks by Koji Kondo by the sound of a sampler or a down sample, like that dirty, gritty thing run through chorus, I think is one of the most beautiful sounds. Um, right, you can draw your own DWGS single cycle waveforms, and I believe that's doable. Um, we're talking about something like additive synthesis there, right? Because you can do it one of two ways. You can actually control each partial, I believe, or there's sort of a mode where you move one of these sliders 
kind of like over a period of time and that's how you draw the waveform almost like what you could do i i want to say i don't know if it's fm8 or some synth can let you do that too um so it's super cool yeah starts with a very basic waveform and add harmonics to that odds make squares and use them to make saws or use them all to make saws or ramps right so can you go so dub if you can help explain it to me so for those of you guys who don't know if you start with a fundamental and add a bunch of partials to it you end up with a sawtooth wave if it has both even and odd harmonics if it has only odd harmonics that's a square wave but a lot of really cool digital waves uh tend to have higher than square wave values up high so with this are you always at max going to a a sawtooth or can you go higher than that dub i'd just be curious this one's called x switch yeah so uh, i remember this one so depending on the velocity you end up with different sounds so if i play it quietly we get this really great string sound but i could also hammer it and get well hammer it i i did earlier Well, I, maybe it's not velocity switch. Maybe it's something else is switching it. <laughs> I actually don't know what I'm doing. Not going to surprise anybody there, but wow. <laughs> really cool, but different. <laughs> so this, of course, was the sound I started with. Makino, welcome to the stream. Thoughts on the... <laughs> I think is what you're saying. Uh, let's see. Thoughts on the Osmos. I do not have an opinion yet. I haven't even watched one video yet. So um, definitely seems like it is cool, but I will reserve my opinion until I have educated myself, which will be the first time I've ever done that. So we got some more strings here, I believe. Legato. Oh, here we go. Little E piano. Yeah, it looks awesome, Machina, but, you know, uh, first off, haven't had my hands on it. Not that kind of a YouTuber yet. <laughs> and then the second thing is, uh, you know, until I've had some time to really kind of develop an opinion, um, you know, I don't want to say anything because, yeah, you know, it's, it's a thing. Does look good. Yeah, so that's another thing worth saying is that a synthesizer like this is making so much from so little. So that's what's blowing my mind about this is these little floppy disks can have this much info on them. Uh, essentially, the if I'm understanding this correctly, the disks can have both the, it, they store both the raw data that you need to be able to create these sounds as well as the patch info. So inside of this is an analog filter that is incredible it's been called korg's best depending on who you ask i like the poly six as well the two of them and so when you pull up a patch you're not just loading a sample like you are with the insonic mirage you're actually pulling up a patch and boy howdy does that filter sound good so here we go with some some additive stuff right Thank you. 
that might be my favorite sound so far. I am in love with those sorts of, uh, you guys know me, I love a hybrid synth. And that's essentially what we're hearing here. We're hearing a sample of an additive wave that's being run through analog filters. And when it comes to vintage synths, I think that's the most awesome combo. And so this is really cool. Obviously, the reason this thing doesn't sell for more is just because its interface is sort of DX7-like, where you're kind of stuck having to do, like, let's pull a parameter. Same is true with the DW8000, even though it's an amazing synth. Synthpunk doesn't agree with me, though, so that's always a thing. Um, yeah. Think of each disk as a patch to call up an Omnisphere or a library patch in contact. It's got all, that is all the memory the DSS-1 had available. Yeah, it's so crazy. It'll be a balance between dissonance and harmonics, depending on what ratios and harmonics you had. Yeah, so I definitely am going to try that out at some point. Um, one of the goals for this year was just to make sure I got a video out or a live stream out on every synthesizer I have in this room. And so... I think this is the last one, actually. I think we've covered everything that's in the room so far. Um, of course, there's new synths coming in the mail. Uh, but it's one of those things where this instrument is probably... I think I saved it for last because it is intimidating. I don't like... Uh, dis how do I say, like, uh, presenting a synthesizer without really understanding at least what's going on with it. And there's so much going on with this one. It's really like... You could forget about the floppy disks and just use this thing as a DW8000. Or you could forget about the waveforms built into it and draw your own. Like, it's pretty insane. They were really shooting for the fences, as I said. <laughs> Just gorgeous. I usually do not like organ sounds, as you guys know. All right, so we got a little bit of analog brass sound here. Uh, Synthpunk's always been nice to me, so I'm not going to <laughs> comment on that, but he does seem to upset a lot of people, so. Wow. We did a comparison of a lot of, like, for instance, the Oberheim up here versus uh, other synths when it came to brass, and this one's pretty good. Sounds very, very, uh, very tight. One thing is, is the velocity is sensitive. And this key bed, I always like to point out things, you know, little things that you might not notice just from listening to the sound of a keyboard. But like the DW8000, this thing's key bed is not setting the world on fire. It's a little clacky. So I'm noticing that I'm not always getting the velocity response I want because there's a lot of velocity to this patch and baked into it. And because of the key bed and probably the fact that it's like 40 fucking years old, like, you know, you're getting something with it. Ooh. Let's just talk about the low end on this, right? So if you haven't heard the DW8000, it's the same thing where... The low end is just crazy. Yo, <laughs> like that is bumping. Are you kidding me? 
2600 coming, right? Um, you know, uh, no. <laughs> I did have an ARP Odyssey in this studio for one day, and uh, unfortunately it was bojangled. And so the guy who sold it to me was nice enough to take it back for me. So Greg, if you're out there watching these videos, thank you very much for being cool and not selling me a busted Odyssey. I think he meant well. He just had it in storage for a long time and these instruments do degrade. If you're going to buy vintage synths, you just have to prepare yourself mentally for spending money, keeping them up, like keeping them alive because even with uh, the synths like this one that were built like a tank, there's still things that the manufacturers didn't, uh, predict would happen sort of the best example would be like the Korg poly six for instance they had this brilliant idea it's a great idea to put a battery inside of the synthesizer that recharged so at the time uh, the batteries would die on your synths eventually and when that happened you'd lose all of your patch memory because there wasn't a lot of ways to back it up i guess cassette tapes or something like that and so Korg had the brilliant idea Along with inventing a new way to tune VCOs, they were like, let's put a rechargeable battery in there. And while the synth is on, it'll charge the battery so you'll never have to replace it. Well, the problem is if you leave it off, the battery will start leaking all over the motherboard. And so it's a good example of good intentions. It's just they couldn't anticipate that happening. Another would be like the JD800 and the red glue problem. Good idea. Didn't work out in the long run. Uh, so what's interesting about this patch that I like that I'm hearing is, and I want to see if we can see over here. But what I like about it is there seems to be some movement to the sound based off of velocity. So let's see, I can control the velocity sensitivity on the program parameters over here. Whoopsie daisy, there goes the microphone. Hey guys, um, we've got aftertouch sensitivity and we have velocity sensitivity. And that can control the voltage controlled filter envelope generator cutoff. So, as well as another parameter, it says attack decay SLP, whatever that means. <laughs> so, there does seem to be some velocity controlling the filter. So, we're getting like some really great variation. Again, this is something that I'm not aware the Insonic Mirage could do. Where if I play quietly, we're getting this like kind of nice, warm, round brass tones. I mean, the balls on that. I, I can s really hit it too and for me that's giving me everything I could want out of an analog brass sound I mean it sounds really good I, I'm in I'm so impressed I cannot believe this is all on one floppy disk it's insane Nice sort of Jupiter-esque analog strings synth percentage mark. Wow. Again, it's just I don't think there's any synthesizer that I have in this room that's got the low end that this one does. Well, it's just. really interesting yes i think so too tony uh real-time control of the filter set program value 61 to 0 and 62 to the joy then controls the filter oh and 62 to on then joystick controls the filter all right let's uh i don't know let's pull up another one let's find a good one for that oh. 
Ooh, nice uh, love vocal format type stuff. I always think of like Kraftwerk. seriously perverted bitch yo 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 anonymous thank you for the six dollar and 66 cent donation let me run over here real quick and see what that said there is a donation comment to help keep your synths alive thank you very much whoever you are out there you are awesome you must be well endowed (laughs) this is uh a fun hobby and you guys make it possible for me to keep doing it so i appreciate everybody who supports directly everybody who joins the channel as a member so you can get access to these awesome emoji huh little bit of dodgy playing yeah i'm gonna get involved with the joystick it's the same joystick as you have on the dw8000 so if i hold a note down you can bend it of course right but then this controls the filter there's an lfo just for uh controlling either oscillator vibrato or the filter so if i Yeah. And um, I actually quite like this joystick, and it's amazing how well these things have survived the 80s. They feel really flimsy, but uh, they're there. They're, they're still happening. So uh, I am going to do Dubstation's trick in a second. I just want to find a good patch where it makes sense. Kalimba. Ooh, yeah, we're getting some... Love some of those vibes. Bells. And this is also one of those things about Korg. And people ask why I like Korg so much. And it's there's just something about the sound of Korg synthesizers over the decades they always have this sort of like a little bit better than their competition sound design with the exception of eric persing at roland like you know you can't compete with that guy we got some variations here uh 32 Interesting. Program 33. Did I lose my... Ah! No, don't do it. What happened? Oh. Four? You let me pick something else? What happened? <laughs> oh, no. Ooh. What's going on with these membrane keys? Oh, dear. <laughs> might, be, <laughs> might be time for some vintage synth restoration. <laughs> we get a little little something here don't want to talk with this too much oh i think i know what's happening it pff, talk about stupid faux pas you can fit 32 sounds on a floppy disk right got it <laughs> uh so that it's not the buttons that are messed up it's my brain obviously um yes 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 Aquatic, I agree. I can't find the membership link. Um, Okay, so if you're in the... Like, I have the chat open on my phone here. The lower right-hand side, there should be a little dollar sign. Dollar, dollar bills. And then it just says, join for membership right there. So maybe try that out. Um, Let's see. Wow, that's a lot of famous people using this thing. So cool. Yeah, and it's working great. So I believe now I can hit system and select two 
and then select, what do I want to do? Can I press B? How do I get B? System, no, no, I want system, how do I get system B? Oh, wait, here we go. Move the slider, of course. <laughs> So I should be able to hit enter and then yes, and now we'll see the system B uh, set of patches. So this is pretty crazy. It's 128 patches per floppy disk, I believe, if I'm understanding the architecture correctly, which is just too cool. So we got a second here. So if anybody has any new purchases they've gotten for themselves in the new year or for your holiday of choice, please let me know if anybody's got any new synths that they're interested in. I myself have got what? I've got two and a half. So I'm trying to buy a Formanta Polyvox. And I've been going through the process of trying to get one from Ukraine, uh, from a guy in Kiev. And the problem is, is that PayPal was, is, because of international regulations, is not letting me send him money. So Reverb is trying to help me out. They're like, yeah, we're going to try to make this work for you and see if we can figure out some way to do it. But right now I'm trying to buy a Polyvox, but the problem is, is that I can't get the money into Ukraine. So it's an interesting world we're in right now. And of course, the conflict in Ukraine is still going. It's like, it, you know, we did the charity stream for my friend Igor over there, um, sound designer for Nat Life Sounds. And the thing is, is that, you know, it's, it's, it's so easy to forget. It's like so easy to just sort of like move on. And it's not like grabbing the nation's attention like it was for a bit there, but people are still in major trouble. So anyways, I'll get off my soapbox. Just wanted to say that. Um, oh yes, I saw that you took apart that SY-77. That's another synth I've been very interested in. All right, so O one. one Wait, wait. Uh, wait, well, turn that off and then go, uh, O one, O two, Arco mix. So I think these are just variations, right? Ooh, that one is gorgeous. We'll just run through a few of these real quick. No, no, no. Okay, so I think system B is the same. Let's see here. Strings 1 and 3, strings 1 and 2. System C is strings, bass, and violins are... All right, so I think in the interest of time, we will consider this floppy conquered, and we will move on to some other floppy disks that I've been excited to check out. So let's pull up... Let me see here. What else do we have? Here we go. So a lot of the sounds we checked out on the Insonic Mirage were samples of synthesizers. So I don't know well, how well you guys can see it. I'll try to keep this so you guys can actually see. I don't know if you can. But we've got a DX7, a JX10, a Japan FX, whatever that is. We've got some Moog and DX Moog layers. Moog, DX Moog, JX10. So we've got some vintage synths to check out here. So why don't we do that? Because I'd be interested to hear as a more one-to-one -one how this thing compares to the Mirage. Because I do have some of the original factory um, floppies for the Mirage. But the paper has fallen off because the glue has gotten old. So I don't know what's on them and I need to go through and do the whole thing. But anyway, so we'll go to system real quick. System, please. System. One. And then move the data entry to system A, press enter. Are you sure? Yes. And like I said, this is a great time to tell me about how your lives are going uh, because I love the tea, love to know what's going on with everybody. Hello, hello. Um, so Dub, what do you think about the SY77? That to me sort of seems to be maybe in like the Kawhi K4 territory where it's like perhaps an underrated synthesizer and in fact if i'm correct it was designed by at least part of the same team that went on that did the wave station they both have the vector synthesis going on um and when i've heard demos of it it sounds pretty good so yeah just something to think about i can hear this thing's going i don't know if you guys can hear 
I uh, just wanted you guys to be able to hear that it's, it is going. You should get a floppy drive emulator for the DSS-1. I definitely think I want to do that for the Mirage. Um, I haven't fully decided what I'm going to do as far as... So you have to turn system off here, and now we're into the first sounds. I kind of like that it has the original floppy disk. I know it's weird, but there's something about, you know, making music with floppy disks in 2023 that I find charming and exciting. You put a floppy disk in, you get a whole new set of sounds. So it's an interesting thing. But I will say that the floppy drive emulators, I was talking to my tech, Ramiro from Severed Machines, and he was saying, yeah, it's the way to go because the floppy disks are going to fail. The drives are going to fail. And you have just all of those different sounds in there. So there's something to be said. Really big. So we got a JX10 here. Um, the, the SY is really cool. It's got layers of a DX7, basically with subtractive engine to layer as well. And it also is uh, a sample-based instrument, right? Like it's, so it's sort of kind of got that wave station-y thing, or am I wrong? Oh, this is interesting. Yeah, definitely kind of formanty. Yeah, not my favorite one I've heard so far. Japan effects. Huh. I guess that's what effects are like in Japan, question mark? DX7. <laughs> that's sick. Yeah, this is... Pretty crazy. I'm still looking for one that I'm excited to mess with the filter with. MIDI and FX. I wonder if I'm not understanding what it means by MIDI. I wonder if that's like the name of an instrument. MIDI wave. DX and FX. DX and Waves. This one's nice. It's okay. Not as impressed by this sound bank so far as the strings one. Ooh. get really lot of dynamic range out of that in an earlier stream I said that I'd probably sell the DW or the DSS because of their similarities still feel that way I don't know <laughs> I'm hoping this stream sort of rectifies that opinion for me Keep going here, velocity. Wow. Wow. Wave number one. Yeah, I like the waves. Sort of like a digital E piano. Ooh, this guy. Okay, so what was it? Parameter 61. So I should be able to go program parameter 61. Joystick bend range. I don't think that's the right parameter dub. What was it? Uh, value 61 to 0. Oh, maybe it is. So let's put it to... Uh, ooh, I didn't mean to do that. Okay, wait, wait. Let's undo that. And then 61 
bitch bend range zero. Okay, let's do that. And then what was the rest of the recipe? 62 to, okay, so then parameter, okay, so enter, is that what I do? Yes, and then 62, joystick, voltage controlled filter sweep to on, enter. <laughs> Oh, cool. Thank you for letting me know that. Wow, so you can get these really muted sort of... That filter sounds so good, although I do detect is that... Little bit of stepping. Maybe not. Sounds really good. Now, if I pull another program, right? So if I turn that off and I pull up 16, we're back to where we were. So we have to do that per patch. But I guess we could always save it too, right? That's a really cool thing though. Analog one, here we go. Ooh. Definitely could hear a little bit of that CS80 sound from like uh, Africa by Toto on this one. So this would be another one I'd like to try out. So program parameter 61, and then we'll bring that all the way off and then 62 all the way on. That's actually very quick. This is actually very fun. You have pretty good control over it, too. It's just a little, you know, you don't have a whole lot of range. I don't know how well you guys can see that. I might have put that just off camera. So let me move that over just a little bit. Can you guys see me fiddling with that? Anyways, so moving right along to Tundra. It's incredible. Isn't that so full and nice and warm? That low end is just... expressive too like the way you hit it can change the sound of it it's really really cool i love that patch tundra is so good unison yikes so it's uh in mono right Boy, howdy. That's, that's disco. <laughs> Let's see. Syncrix. Definitely getting a little LA vibe there. Oh, 
I love these sorts of sounds. Wow. Huh. Sin bass. Thick. Are you kidding me? Wow. Beautiful. Effects echo. Also very cool sequence. Sign and effects. You can hear what that's uh, doing. The filter's actually got a pretty good amount of resonance on it. Zen? Industry? Whoa. Hey, Autumn, how's it going, my friend? Welcome to the stream. Just checking out this awesome synthesizer from 88. So, Dub, I, I don't know. I'm still kind of split on whether or not this is staying or going. So this would be a good time if you guys have, uh, if you're a member of the channel, you can actually tell me whether I should keep or sell these guys. Sell this synth. Digipad. I'm going to like this one just based off of the name, right? So if I went over here to voltage controlled filter cutoff, let's hit that one program parameter 32. Cutoff is at 69 right now. Nice. Whoa. Shouldn't have done that. Let's go to 62. Wait, wait, 32. And if I adjust this, oh, I see. That changes the cutoff. If I want to select that other, what do I do? Move the cursor over. Okay, I see. So. Hearing that with the cutoff a little higher, I'm getting that like Prophet VS type sound. It's incredible how well this synth can kind of emulate that Prophet VS thing. Like when I'm hearing this, I've got that sound and we can bring the cutoff down a little bit and then see how this sounds. And that immediately calls to mind the Jex 8P soundtrack 
preset where it's just that famous sound used in Twin Peaks. Uh, just, just gorgeous. And then all the way, whoop, shouldn't have messed with that one. What was it? 32. Oh, now we're way off. Okay. Let's just leave that alone. Pull up a new thing. Digi res. Oh, you've got COVID. That sucks. Yo, Mighty Pinto. How's it going, my friend? Once again, checking out synthesizers. Pops. And that's the end of that. Why don't we keep moving right along? Let's see what else would be kind of cool to check out. Got a bunch of different things here. What's do with you, Mighty Pinto? Haven't heard or talked to you in a while. It's my bad. I'm not very good at keeping up with good friends. Okay, we, we got a guitar here. We have an acoustic guitar. Nylon guitar and mandolin. Let's check that one out. Acoustic guitars. Steel string acoustic guitar. So on this disc, system B is the steel string. So I want to see how that sounds. I love acoustic guitars sampled in to a synth, maybe with some effects, some filters, stuff like that. Um, but there's always more synths out there. Isn't that the truth? Okay, so one, enter. Am I sure? Yes. Oh, wait. I was not sure i wanted system p <laughs> so this will take a little bit yes it's uh i saw you post it's aggdq right i usually check it out every year i haven't had a chance this year yet any uh standout streams for you that i should check out i i used to watch aggdq religiously i think i saw the first one i saw was back in 2013 something like that uh maybe 2014 somewhere around there was when i started watching and um I think it was that first, like, speed run from Narcissa of uh, Ocarina of Time that was, like, sub-20 or 30 minutes or something like that. I was like, what the hell am I watching? So definitely a cool thing. All right. So, okay. That was not what we wanted. We wanted System B. System B. There we go. Enter. Yes. Okay. So another minute as we load some steel guitar strings into this puppy and see what they came up with. So, I don't know. This might actually be worth keeping. The sound is just great. I mean, the sound is, is there, you know? And there's this weird thing about vintage synths where, you know, you, you, certain synths like the Kawhi K1 or the K3, well, Someone get, people get mad at me if I say the K3's like budget or something like that because it is amazing. But let's just say the K1 for this example. The K1 is very much like a, a poor man's Roland D50. But I love this synthesizer. I think it sounds great. I bought this one for $200. And it's so cool to get a synthesizer from, I believe, 1988 for 200 bucks, right? And it sounds great. I love the sound, but it sounds bad, right? So that's kind of the interesting thing is like a lot of the times the problems with certain synths actually add to the character. And then sometimes the problem from certain synths detracts from the character. So it's, it's one of those things where depending on the synthesizer, you know, a bad might be good. And in this case, uh, this thing was really shooting for hi-fi in 80. Six, I think is when it came out. I might have said 88 earlier, but I believe it's 86 actually. Uh, love money, Autumn. <laughs> I actually did a stream of Dead Space where I played through the whole game. That's actually when Mighty Pinto showed up. And there is a playlist on the channel. So if you go to the YouTube channel and hit playlists, there should be one up there. Actually, Aquatic. Um... A seven-hour Final Fantasy VII stream. Yeah, that's crazy. So, anyways, let's check out some of these sounds. Uh, so, the first sound is Guitar One. Guitar One. 
Oh, it sounds just right there already. You can hear the sample's a little short up here. Wow! Wow, all the way up here, this is so neat. They multi-sampled it so that you've got all of the stuff you could need, you know. Right? But if you want to add a little bit of realism, so like let's say you're playing a chord, and then you want to move over. Right? So you have those like little sounds that you get from when you move your hand along the fret. So cool. Sounds very beautiful. Already happy. That's more of like a chorus guitar thing, not my thing as much. Oh, now we're using that digital delay line instead of a chorus. Now it is a delay. Oh, I totally missed your comment there. In LA on the 21st, you'll be performing at the LA Synth and Pedal Expo. That's awesome, dude. Congratulations. That's that's a big deal, man. <laughs> Oreos tonight. You can hear how there's little slides in there. It's a little too much, but I kind of like where they were going. It's like, um, it's, uh, what's it called? The, uh, the new Sonic extension from, um, for Omnisphere that has all those wonderful little noises in there. Bob Daspit, uh, recorded the guitars for that. And he's been working with Eric Persing all the way back to the JD 800. Oh, this one's great. A little bit less attack. Mix. Mix two, little octave action, DSS one. <laughs> e piano one. Oh, that one's great. That is very. Piano two. Clav. I love how they layer in some synth stuff with samples. Here we go. Moving right along, this is the uh, additive bow. Brass. Duck wave, whatever a duck wave is.
Wave 3. and cricks. Really good, really gorgeous. Wave three. I think it's the same as before. Sweeper. All right. I'm ready for a good sweep. Gorgeous, like a sort of like a phaser type sound. I'm assuming that's created by the digital delay line. I agree, Dub. I mean, here's the reason why I considered it is because I do like synthesis. You know what I mean? Like I like making my own sounds. And so part of me when I said that was thinking like, Ultimately, this thing kind of, I was thinking, came down to sort of just like slapping a floppy in, but it's got a lot to it. And like these starting points are great. I mean, come on, right? Now, I'd be interested actually to check out what the filter is doing here. Turn that off. And then, uh, what was it? Oh. Filter sweep on and then 61 off. So I don't know if you know more than I do about this particular sound, but to me it sounds like it might be the sawtooth or even the brass waveform from the DWA 1000 that we're hearing here. crazy you know what and it's not bad i'm actually shocked at how quickly versus i mean in theory you should be able to do the same thing with the dw8000 because has a similar thing it's got the little you know program it in but there's something about this keypad and the way it's laid out like i said it's nice having this zero key here so you're like oh you know parameter boom 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 and that one, it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's like kind of not what you're used to. Whereas this is like a telephone keypad that I remember from a kid. I mean, I guess that's how phones still are, but it's just on the screen. You only sample draw an additive patch from scratch. Well, I mean, I get that because it is uh, just super exciting. It, it, it really, I think the reason. This one's probably not going to get sold. Is it just sounds so good, right? Uh, and some of these patches are just... Just so good. Uh, like, the, this sort of thing to me is kind of like... I've always lusted after a Profit VS, but I'm like, actually, this is kind of everything you need to have, right?
or we could go to parameter 32 and just change the cutoff, right? A little harsh, so we could bring it down. Turn key tracking down. Okay, so that would be do 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 somewhere over here. BCF resonance. Okay, parameter thirty three, and then we just move the this over, and we can turn that all the way off. There we go. And that's the thing that I love about hybrid sense like what you're saying dub is this thing like if we go to the cutoff here i have it set to 97 if i bring that all the way up i fucked up again <laughs> 97 bring it all the way up this to me is too harsh because you're getting that like really brittle not wonderful top end but bringing that just down to 97 or so 92 Maybe even a little more. Let me bring it up. 99. Yeah, it's just... Just something about a little bit too brittle waveforms being fed into an analog filter. Can't get enough of that shit. I am a slut for that shit, for hybrid sense. Um, yeah, that's the thing, is the filter... If, if this was just like a super clean sample and you fed it through the analog filter, it would just sound dark, right? It'd be kind of boring. But because you have that, like, stuff up there, it's really interesting. Why don't we try... Let's see here. And then we'll move the EG intensity up. This is interesting. It's like... No release on that. So let's see if we can find um, filter controlled filter. Where is it? There's EG intensity. Oh, let's try 35. Oh, here we go. Attack, decay, sustain, release. Wow, so we got, oh right, it's a six stage thing. So it's attack, decay, break point, sustain, sustain, release. So if we move just the cursor over to release, we could add some release, right? I like it kind of snapping down, actually. But not, not as bad as it was. Oh yeah, it sounds great. It sounds really great. And then let's go ahead and find the resonance, which is parameter 33, right? And then we can just add a little resonance. Let's, I'm going to make it a little more extreme just so we can hear how it sounds. Let's get the resonance to scream a little bit, but then I'm going to go to parameter 32 and bring the cutoff down just a little bit further. Well, you can hear, so cutoff all the way down, you do hear something. I would not call that my best sound I've ever come up with, but it's pretty cool. And and like you said, the the thing about this is 
I don't see myself doing traditional synth sounds with it when I have a DW8000, right? Which we'll be checking that out next stream. That will be a lot easier to program with a DW8P because you have all of the parameters right there on faders in front of you. But I don't think I could get this sound with that. So it's kind of like, I might still need this guy. By the way, we've covered what? Two floppy disks? It's crazy. Moog. Nice old Moog sound, fat bass. Pretty good. Harmonic harmonia. Oh God, this one. Right. What is it? This. Little bit of that Greek action in there for sure. Uh, 29, Harpsy. Yeah, that deep funk sound was great. Mix three. Little honky tonk piano, DSS one. little bit of pitch envelope so one of the things with the dw8000 is you actually do have an auto bend feature in here so i imagine it's carried over got a little bit of a stuck key there um definitely pretty incredible i mean i'm super impressed let's pull up one more of these guys let's see what else we have here see if there's anything else we can make ha happen Real quick. Piano, bass and violin. We got some sitars, electric guitar, tenor sax. What else do I have here? Guitars. Let's set aside a few things. We got those. Oh yeah, what is this? The This was yeah, the second disc. It's crazy. Let's see what else we have here. I want to try at least some other sounds that are kind of outside of that. We got woodwinds. Might be good. Got some more acoustic guitars, rock guitar, slap bass. Got some electric pianos, including a CP70 by Yamaha DX7. Got some Japanese stuff, video game sounds, male voices, brass hits, drums. All right, I think I'm going to go with this woodwinds one because that's interesting to me. You know, we hear so many strings and brass sounds in the synths world. Sitars, yeah. Well, we'll try the sitars out. Fuck it. Right? Let's go ahead and get that in there. If you want to hear sitars, I aim to please, my friend. Where did I put that disc? Here we go. <laughs> we might not check out every sound on here, but let's give it a shot. System... Enter, uh, nope, I want system A, enter. Yes, I'm sure. Okay, it's loading. Sitar sounds incoming. <laughs> um, reinstalling Windows 3.1 from a crap load of floppies. Yeah, it's definitely a thing. Yeah, so auto bend is definitely something cool. I actually want to make a sound like this brass one uh, on the D50 to show how the pitch envelope works on that. So on the upcoming video where I go through how to program the Roland D50, that'll be a thing. So really cool.
Uh, so we'll check out some sitar sounds and some woodwind sounds, and we'll call it a night. Uh, like I said, next week, DW838P 8 from Retroactive and Sitar 1. Uh, what do I want to play? Pretty bright, biting. Oh, it's better down here, right? <laughs> Rhythm one. Oh, my God. Oh, shit. Let's write all the way down. I need to sample that. That's dope. Oh, yeah. That, that would be a bop. Tambora? Wow, that is harsh. Magic mix. Oh, I love. Okay, so down here you can just drone a note and it's got whatever rhythms, but obviously the tempo stretches with the rhythm, just like on a vinyl record or something like that. So if I picked... Uh, Little jam right there. Awesome. Rhythm plus. Feel like a lava track from an N64 racing game. Magic mix again. I kind of do want to sample these, though, just because it's hilarious. I mean, it's, it's dope. I mean... DSS one. Now we're kind of moving into some sounds I think we've heard before. All right, so I guess that was probably all that we had on that. Let me see if there's anything else. We have a second tabla rhythm and percussion effects. So yeah, I'm gonna spend some time another night and go uh, sample some gritty ass ethnic drums. Super cool. Uh, super cool but i want to check out these woodwinds so system one enter are you sure yes and then we'll unselect system that's a thing i got super confused when i first turned this on so if you're turning yours on for the first time a lot of the times like if you loaded the system off the disc you would think that it would unhighlight automatically but it doesn't it's not a problem once you get used to it you just hit the button but for a while, I was, like, fucking shit up because I was, like, trying to get a sound going. Um, so, something to think about. Let's see here. It's still going. Still loading. Donnie, hey, what's up, homie? How's it going? Welcome to the stream. We're almost done loading this Woodwind's floppy disk into the Korg DSS-1 from 1986. Super excited. Okay, so it's system off. WWE-1. Woodwind Ensemble 1, probably. Let's try the second one.
these to me are a little rough in terms of like identifying what the sounds are like i don't know i would know that it would be woodwinds just by hearing this sounds a little stringy bit of a uh... all right so that disc was not as awesome no worries uh not all the way there now i've completely changed my mind after hearing those awesome <laughs> ethnic rhythms i want to there were some drums in here Let's try Latin percussion. That sounds good. Let's see here. System one, enter. Yes. All right. We'll see how this sounds. And uh, if it's not great, we'll call it a night. Uh, but yeah. So super cool. One thing about loading floppies into samplers from the 80s is they take a while, like a minute and a half between each one. So as we come to an end of this wonderful scum night, once again, I'd like to ask you guys, do you have any questions for me about this synth? Other synths could be about my sex life, could be about my hopes and dreams, could be about the worst mom memories, whatever you guys want to ask me. This is a good time to throw it in the chat before we end the stream. Always a lot of fun to do that. <laughs> uh, and like I said, next week, Korg DW8P, or I'm sorry, Korg DW8000 retroactive DW8P controller for it. So we're going to get into some actual synthesis with the DW8000. Check that out. It's going to be really awesome. I've been looking forward to doing this stream for over a year since I got this programmer for it. Uh, we are good to go. And then, like I said, I'm working on a definitive guide on how to program the Roland D50. I've already spent six hours recording uh, content for that. And it's going to be really awesome when it's out. So that's a thing that's happening. <laughs> huh. So you can kind of get like a little... What plugin can do what this Korg does nowadays? Can anybody think of one? I don't really think there is one. Um, I mean, in some sense, if we're talking about sampling, you could use something like Contact, right, to load some samples. And then I use Tal has a, it's a plugin that simulates the digital to analog converters of old samplers. And that's really good. So actually, the Tal sampler would probably be the best example of something. So it's got that sort of a sound. But what it doesn't have is analog filters. What it doesn't have is an additive synthesis engine. So there's a lot that this makes this synth sampler special. Oh, okay. Have a good night, Autumn. I love you. All right, so let's try the next patch here. Seems like a kind of a different arrangement. Kind of reminded me of like some mist per percussion.
Okay, so that's a thing you could do with this. Let's pull out a couple of more of these discs here. Let's see if we get one more. I'd like to end on something that's a little bit more exciting than that. Let's see what else we have here. I think I had a choir one. Here we go. Choir, female voice, and male voice. Let's finish this off. We got a bunch of choir stuff. I think that would be fun. I love breathy 80s stuff, so I hope there's something in here that kind of scratches that particular itch. Enter. Yes, I have to really kind of dig into that key a bit, which I don't love. So, uh, Loom 2 as additive, that's correct. Um, so does Alchemy built into Logic. Um, you can get certain additive type sounds out of uh, Sculpture as well. It's a physical modeling, but it's in there. Um, you know, since like the um, K5000S and of course Alchemy was based off of that, they can do a lot of really crazy shit or like Razor where, you know, partials are fading in and out. Each partial has its own envelope and stuff like that. Additive, when it comes to the DSS-1 and the K3 and the DW-8000, we're talking about like one waveform. We're not really talking about morphing waveforms. That was still a few years to come. Voices 1. Wow. Oh yeah, we're in the neighborhood. I guess it's key tracking that's causing that to be darker down there. Choir. Let's go ahead and go to Program parameter, we're looking for cutoff, which is 32. Bring that all the way up. Yo. Yo, this is sick. Reminds me a lot of, um, like, Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask. Temple of Time voices. Hey, I appreciate it, Neon Void. I try to always do a mixture of my shitty personality, a little bit of history, a little bit of sounds played badly, a little bit of educational stuff, and then, you know, always acknowledging that people like Dubstation know much more than I do. Aquatic, a lot of people are coming to this chat. I mean... John Skippy Lemkul being here designed the wave station. Really gorgeous. <laughs> this patch is called Karen. It is always a fun time. I love hanging out with you guys. Uh, I appreciate it, Neon. It means a big difference. The game Another World had this pad, too. Yeah, it's a very famous type of sound. John Tetto. I love that they give you the singer's names. Both. Huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. 
whoa, that is like gonna break my headphones. That is gorgeous, but. Reminds me a lot of um, the intro from one of those Microtrip League songs. Can't think of it. Oh, that's gorgeous. Oh, I see. It's like you hold it. comes back. Wow. That filter. Gorgeous. Voice two. again turned into a piano <laughs> funny enough Simmons oh this is Simmons drums yo that's heavy I don't know why that's mixed into a bunch of choir patches I guess sometimes they just accidentally leave something on here. Yeah, so it's sort of like there's like some default stuff in here too. So let's go, um, let's see on this disc here. Female and male voice, piano and choir. Let's go ahead and try that out. So on the same disc, if we go to system one and then i change this to b here we can pull system b off the same disc yes i'm sure so it's loading one last time this is the end last one and um we will get check out a little bit of piano and choir action a little bit of 80s ballad shit you know it's what i love i love that shit let's see here we're loading <laughs> still loading I don't know if you guys can hear that sound, but it's a, uh, it's a thing. It's making a very like, kind of like a printer <laughs> type of sound. Let's see. But yeah, anyways, guys, I, before we close it out, this is like a good as chance as any. I just want to say thank you guys so much for your support every week. You guys are amazing. You make it possible for me to be able to do this. It's been a dream come true. Scum night, hanging out with friends and synthesizers. What more could you need? <laughs> So uh, let's turn that off. Piano. Very nice. Eight foot. Let you get higher. Get really high. DDL piano. A little bit of honky tonk action from the uh, digital delay being pulled so tight that it turns into a chorus. Right, very nice. Rhodes in piano, I'm thinking. Yeah.
Here we go. This one's gorgeous. Really good. I love that one. Choir. Hey, we got some choirs. wobbliness to that one. Wow. Gorgeous. These are some of the best patches so far. Mix two. Yeah, just that regular old patch again. I guess that was it. So it's like there's some like default patches. Bell's choir. Piano, bells, female voice. Let's try that one. System D. I know I, I lied. System D. Let's try that out. One more for the fuck of it. One more for the boys. Pour out some beers for the lads. Yeah, it's been really fun. Clearly only scratched the surface here, which is kind of awesome. So, one of the reasons I said that I might sell this one is because I just love the Proteus plus orchestral that I have over there. It's the sound of X-Files in the Mist. I think it sounds amazing, but it still has something that gives it that charm. Um, I think that's 16-bit, but there's still something in it that's not full fidelity, you know? This one's a notch down from that, but the filter's actually, actually, like, insane. Like, it's really good, and the fact that you can save patches with filter modulation, everything's actually super cool. Would love to get into figuring out how to do this on my own, um, but it, obviously it's a lot of going through the stuff. But as far as like taking a sound and editing it, really good. I think these are, oh, here we go. Ah, piano. Really nice, love a breathy. Vibro piano? A variation on the gremlins patch?
really great. Matt Adder, 420. Greatest sampler from the 80s. Like it? What about synth? Yeah. I mean, it's it's a really good synth, too. I mean, just listen to these sounds. It's crazy. <laughs> It's not that bad from scratch. I believe it. I'd love to like take something like um I'm thinking about like the luminosonic light bulbs patch from Omnisphere, load it onto a floppy and then mess with it. Ooh, that's kind of nice. Brightness to it. More like FME, of course. And now we're just on to. Wow. Yeah, so that's a good stopping point for the synth tonight. You guys, let me know what you think. As always, I love hearing everybody's opinions about these synths and hopefully I mean I know for me to sum up this was a this was a major success you know going into this one I was kind of like I said to dub like a little on the fence about it uh now that I've heard it and I think we've only pulled up like four or five at tops of these these floppies front and I've got boatloads of floppies just like floppies for days motherfucker so it's it's definitely one of the coolest samplers. I still want to figure out how to fit it into my workflow. There's just something about, for me as a synthesist, where I don't love, like, sticking a disc, press a button, go. It's funny, though, because I love that about the Proteus. Like, you just, okay, you need a string sound, here you go. But something about this makes me want to delve in and use that analog filter, because it's gorgeous, it's amazing. It really does sound great. I don't know. Now, Retroactive did release at some point a programmer for this thing. Um, it's tough. It's like, you almost need, I don't know. You need like, I wish, I, I don't know enough about it. If there'd be a way to integrate like a USB uh, floppy drive so that the programmer could always pull the exact sound it needs off of that, that would be pretty much insane like if you could pull whatever sample you want onto a sound at a moment's notice and then you know program it with like hands-on controls it's a thousand dollar programmer which is probably more expensive than uh plugin guru said you could get one of these for 650 off of ebay right now awesome um but you need the floppies too that's another thing guys like a big part of what you're paying for here are these guys because without these, well, you can still do a lot. I mean, Dub's doing a lot, but for me, I think it would be a waste to get one of these and not get the floppies. Although, of course, you could get just the emulator and plug it in. That might be what I end up doing anyways. Uh, Kira, welcome to the stream. Hey, I appreciate it, Mad Hatter. I appreciate you so much. Yeah. Oh, you got an EPS 16. That's awesome. Uh, We've got a bunch of Insonic fans here. Um, I've definitely been interested in maybe getting another Insonic sampler, but I'm more of a synth guy than a sampler guy. I'll say that all day long. Um, samplers are awesome, but they are cumbersome in this day and age. And you know, I'm still I'm still a little bit of uh, old school when it comes to. And by old school, I mean for my generation, I still prefer contact and uh, things like that. If I go for like a string sound in a production or something, just because it's quick. Um, I think uh, I've got what is it? Audio Imperia's newest library, and that's pretty amazing. So, but this is more about having flavor and. You know, when it comes to doing, like, these types of sounds. What was it? I mean, it really does sound pretty pretty amazing. Not that note, though. But, you know, it, there is that question, though. When it comes to synthesis, the waveforms that are in here are also in the DW8000, which we'll be covering next week. And so for that reason, it's like that 
definitely is a synth powerhouse in, as well. So you can load samples to existing program data. I'm not entirely sure I know what you mean by that, but I think I guess it's just like oh, I I think I see what you're saying. Like you can load the samples into the actual memory of the synth and then save that. Is that what you meant to say? Or you probably said it right. Is Am I understanding you correctly, I guess, is what I'm saying there, Dub. Because, yeah, it's definitely a thing. Keep the patch, change the sample. The, oh, I see. That's really cool, too. Wow. Yeah, so there's a whole lot to cover with this guy. Anyways, guys, I'm Vulture Culture. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for supporting me every Wednesday at 9. Be back next week with the DW8P from Retroactive controlling a Korg DW8000 from 1985. One of my favorite vintage hybrid analog synths of all time. It's going to be a great time. And I hope you have a wonderful week till then. Thank you so much. Love and light, bitches. See you next time. <laughs>